In today's video, we will be focusing on the short story Blackout written by Roger Mace. We will be looking at the different elements of prose that are incorporated in the story and we will also be providing an analysis of the story and the series of events and how they took place. So we're going to begin with the definition behind the title of the story, Blackout. Blackout is suggestive of the conservation of energy and also of a black man who is free or out at a time when racism was evident and whites were seen as being superior to blacks. I am going to now look at the plot structure. I'm going to explain the different parts of the plot structure for the story. We're going to begin with the exposition and we're going to end with the resolution. Now the exposition of the story, as we know, is the introduction of the story. So it introduces the characters, it introduces the background, it also provides information as to the setting of the story. Now, we could tell based on evidence provided in the story that the story took place during wartime in a suburban city on a tropical island of the West Indies. We see where Mays mentions that there was a sensible woman who was standing at the bus stop, a sensible American white woman to be precise, was waiting at the bus stop while she realized that there was a black man who was approaching her who was dressed in conventional shirt and pants and a pair of canvas shoes on his feet. Now, it is important to note that based on the way that the man is being described, that we could clearly conclude that the man approaching the woman at the bus stop is poor. Moving on to the rising action. So the woman is smoking, but indicates that she has no match. He hesitates perplexity and then reminds her that she is smoking. Now, the woman had concerns in regards to this. She wondered if the man would actually believe that she does not have a match, considering that the man saw her smoking while he was approaching her at the bus stop. Now, there is no argument against the fact that she is smoking, but she sees it as an act of intimacy to even consider giving the man a light from the cigarette that she was smoking. However, after hesitating, the man's steady gaze causes her to submit. So she holds the cigarette out and tells him to lie from it. However, the man interprets the gesture all wrong. She means that the man should take the cigarette and lie from it. She had no intentions whatsoever to continue smoking the cigarette from, the, from which the man had lit his. All right, so let's now look at the climax of the story. So as the man begins to smoke his cigarette and wanted to thank the woman for allowing him to light from her cigarette, she, he realized that the woman disposed of the cigarette that she was smoking from. She breaks the silence after the man gazes at her again and questions the man's hesitation to move. However, the man re remains decent and apologizes for making her waste her cigarette. She nervously laughs and dismisses it as nothing, even though she's feeling foolish. The woman thinks to herself that if she prolongs talking to a black man, that it would seem indecent, so she decides to stump him after his reply to her thinking of why he is not moving. His remark to her action causes an intense argument that leads to the woman thinking that the man has an intimate interest in her. However, the man laughs and dismisses her thinking by implying that she is absolutely not his type of woman and she has nothing to worry about in that regard. The man assumes she is waiting for the bus. He indicates to her that the bus is approaching and thanks her once again for the light as she responds with a giggle. The 
bus comes up, but the man doesn't move. He stands there quietly aloof. There is something about him that was once challenging and disturbing, and he shakes her supreme confidence in some important sense. Now, as the story comes to an end, we see where the woman gets on the bus, but as the bus moves off, she is conscious of his eyes scrutinizing her. She fights the urge to not turn her head and take a last look at him because she was concerned about what the people on the bus would think of her looking back at the black man at the bus stop. It is good, however, that she didn't look because perhaps she would have seen the man retrieving the half-smoked cigarette that she disposed of. All right, so the story is told from a third-person point of view. We could tell this because we could understand the events through the woman's thoughts, but we could not understand the man's thought based on what he was thinking. We could therefore conclude that the woman is the main character in the story as she is more dominant in thoughts and it is centered mostly around her, her hesitations, and her worldview regarding the man's presence and the request that the man made. The theme highlighted, or there are quite a few themes in the story that we could highlight, but the one that I will be highlighting is the theme of conflict between races. After reading the story, we see that Maze explores the theme of conflict between races. The woman at the bus stop is hesitant to give the man a light from her cigarette, not only because the man is black, but also because it seems to her as though she would be getting intimate with the man. And now on to characterization. So there are only two characters in the story, a man and a woman. The woman is clearly white and is American, which is a direct characterization. Another direct characterization for the woman is that she is calm despite all the happenings around her. She is described as a sensible woman who knows that she would be able to get help with just one good scream. An indirect characterization for her is that she is racist. And we could conclude that she is racist based on the fact that she had, she mentions that she had no intentions or no business standing at a bus stop joining with a black man. And she emphasizes on black man. Uh, an indirect characterization is that the woman is wealthy. And we could tell that she is wealthy based on the way that the atmosphere, the area that she was in was described. Um, it was described as being an, an atmosphere that was wrapped in exclusive respectability. Now for the man, a direct characterization for the man is that he is tall. And we can find this evidence on page eight. We also know that the man is black. An indirect characterization is that the man is disciplined and he knows how to treat a woman. We could say that because when the argument started between the man and the woman, the man mentions that the woman should be glad that she is actually not a man because if she were to be a man, then he would have given her something to think about. Another indirect characterization for the man which I might have mentioned earlier, is that the man is poor. We could conclude that he is poor based on the way that he was dressed, um, the fact that he was uh, smoking a half-used cigarette, which he might have saved for future purposes. And we could also conclude that the man is poor because we see that he collects the cigarette that the woman disposed of in the gutter as she leaves in the bus. All right, so now we're going to look at figurative language. So Miss uses the cigarette as a symbol in the story. The cigarette that the woman throws away could symbolize wealth or class, especially if it is compared to the half of the cigarette that the man is smoking. It is also possible that the woman is too proud to admit to herself and to the man that what he is saying to her is actually correct. Maze also uses imagery 
to help the reader to understand and to experience the happenings in the story. This is also used to empathize with the man. The different types of imagery that we could find in the story are that of kinesthetic imagery. We could imagine the movements of the man as he approaches the woman at the bus stop. We could also use visual imagery to basically imagine what it looks like to be in an area that was experiencing a partial blackout. We could also use tactile imagery to basically tie in with the the uh, the physical uh, touch of the man to the woman when he took the life from her. In addition to that, we could also consider olfactory imagery, which we could use based on the the fumes that actually came from the cigarette that the man and the woman were smoking at the bus stop. So the imagery enables the reader to literally and figuratively understand the characters as well as to foreshadow the series of events that may follow a particular action. All right, so we're now going to look at the audience to which the story appeals. Now, I know you must be wondering, who does this story appeal to? Now, the audience in a story can be determined by the writer's style, the tone, the context, the use of language, as well as the context in which it is being displayed. We can therefore say that the audience to which the story appeals is to people who are interested in knowing more about the history of racism and how people were treated in previous years. Lastly, we're going to look at the dialogue. The dialogue between the man and the woman can be clearly described as, as being indirect as we see them both engaging in a conversation to which they are both directly and specifically giving responses to. The conversation begins with the man asking the woman for a light after she responds that she does not have a match even though she doubts that the man would believe her. So we have come to the end of our analysis for the short story Blackout. I trust that you may have been able to learn something new. Thank you so much for watching.